Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Thank you. Hi, guys. So, yeah, as I say, um, yeah, it's six years since my last talk at Brighton. I thought it was five. I did the maths this morning. It's actually six. So, yeah, this room actually was the last, my last talk. So, talking about, yeah, tackling keyword calamization to, to dom dominate the SERPs. So, going to start with a little story actually. So, this is my granddad. Frank Miner, it's actually not. I actually tried to find an image of him. Slightly passed away in the 90s, trying to find an image I could use in the slide deck from the early 90s was pretty much impossible. So this is OpenAI's version of my granddad. Actually, it's pretty, pretty accurate, actually. So yeah, we're just gonna pretend that this is my granddad. So I'm start with a story about him, because actually about, in the, as I say, in the early 90s, one of my memories of him was, was sitting me down in, in the pub, actually, it was his flat cap and a, he was piping his pint. He sat me down. It was a really serious conversation, actually. He sat me down. He was like, Charlie, um, you know, you know, I'm coming towards, you know, I'm going to be around forever. I need to ask you a really, I need to ask you a favour, really. And I said, I was like, of course, anything, anything. You know, he looked quite solemn. He was like, I just need you to promise me that after I'm gone, that you will never support Man United. <laughs> Which I was like, you know, of course, of course, granddad, of course, granddad. So you know, I've, to this day, I can assure you that I've kept my word. And unfortunately, that meant I had to support Liverpool, which in the early 90s was a bit of a chore. I'll actually, ever since, I've been a bit of a chore, actually. I did keep my word. So why am I talking about this? So essentially, football and, you know, football and SEO, two of my favourite things, feel a bit similar sometimes. This kind of, um, you know, money first, kind of throw as much shit against the wall philosophy. It's quite, quite common in SEO, very valid in, in football at the moment. It doesn't seem like you can pick up the paper at the moment without some conglomerates, some corporation, even countries trying to buy football clubs and just throwing as much, as I say, shit against the wall to, sit, to try and get success. So that's the link there. Unfortunately, with both, the prudent strategy is essential to make that work. You know, we see it fail in SEO with, you know, people thinking just the bigger budgets and throwing as much at it as you can. It's going to work automatically. And in football, you know, it works sometimes, but often if there's not a prudent strategy, this kind of shit against the wall strategy just doesn't work. And in football, obviously, buying the best players in the world doesn't always guarantee success. So it's two kind of, kind of common trends, though, in, in, in SEO and, and in, in football. So how is, that, how is that relevant to keyword cannibalization? Well, it's kind of this ethos, as I say, of just thinking you can just create as much content as you want, throw it on your site, and obviously you, you're going to succeed. It doesn't, doesn't always work that way. And it creates this, this, this theme of, of keyword cannibalization that, that I'm going to talk you through today. It's been five, let's say six years, bad maths, since my last Brighton SEO talk. That's my slide deck from, from my last one. So my head's kind of the other way around now. We're like, and, you know... <laughs> Yeah, don't even look like that at all anymore, to be honest. But um, yeah, so five years, six years since my last talk. A lot has happened since then. We've had COVID, I've had spinal surgery, I've got married, and as, as, as you said, I mean, I've had two beautiful little girls. So a lot since my last talk, it feels like we're in a very different, a different world. Liverpool got really good at football again, and got really, really bad again, pretty much straight away. Um, we've had four prime ministers. Um, one of the, this letter lasted longer than one of them. <laughs> and we've had 50 major changes to the algo. So that's where we're going with this. You know, the algorithm compared to when I last did my last Brighton SEO talk is almost unrecognisable. Where it's so much different, so much more sophisticated. And I put at least, because I thought when I started doing this, there was a core update coming. Lo and behold, it kind of happened pretty much straight away. So we've had around 12 core updates since I did my last Brighton SEO talk. So, you know, a lot, a lot has, has changed. And, you know, even in the last month, you know, there's been some major changes. So, And I think this is this very linked to keyword cannibalization. The, these core updates, as we know, they're, they're pretty much focused around content quality and how Google is, is ascertaining that. Not, not so much on the technical side. And it's around this helpful, reliable, people-first content, you know. And cannibalization is mainly caused by people trying to manipulate that see how much content they can create to try and boost rankings, but if it's not helpful, people-first content, Google are getting better and better at, and not to say rewarding that, that volume over quality, which is, which is good. And you can see these content and quality you know, questions here that Google gives us. If you're just creating content for every single keyword that you've pulled out of planner, you're not going to be able to make sure it all 
hits these criteria. So that's, that's why I, I think the cannibalization issue is, is, is such a problem and why sites trying to manipulate that do, do, do tend to struggle. So that's where I'm going with this, this kind of oversaturation of, of content creating issues. So, so kind of what is it? I mean, I've explained kind of briefly, but essentially this is kind of my, my, I put myself in quotations, but this is kind of what I say to clients when I'm trying to explain to them, you know, like, I think this is an issue for you. Where URLs on the same domain are competing for organic non-brand rankings, confusing the search engines because yeah, it's so similar, we're like, which, what should we rank for what? And creating SERP flux where, you know, nothing ever settles and, you know, you see, you see your rankings change, ranking pages change. It dilutes the visibility and basically the performance of, of, of all those pages because Google's not sure which one to rank. And that just hampers overall SEO performance because you always find when you resolve this, you, you see performance improve. But it's essentially that competition between your internal URLs for rankings because somewhere along the line you've decided to create you know, a lot of content on the same topic or theme or even keyword. Some keyword cannibalization is inevitable. You're never going to get a site, especially a site with you know, hundreds of thousands of pages or lots of authority that doesn't have some level of competition. It's not always a problem, but I would say with, with most sites, there's always going to be some level. It doesn't mean that you've got to fix every single instance, because, for instance, if you're ranking third and ninth for a keyword, you know, you're probably going to be getting that traffic. It should be converting. It's when that, that's quite an issue in terms of all your rankings are pretty low because you've got so much of it going on, Google just doesn't know what, what's going on. So that's an important takeaway from this, that I'm certainly not saying that with every domain you have to go away and eradicate every single instance of cannibalization. You'll also have brand cannibalization going on. Um, so yeah, that, 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 some of it is inevitable. It's just when you can establish that, that, that it's ham hampering your overall, overall performance. A lot of this was created, I feel, I mean, there's, there's a few other instances I'm gonna give you, but I think the start of this really was, was Panda. Panda was great. I got into SEO in 2010. The results then were, were pretty horrific. Um, SEO was quite easy. Um, Panda came along and cleaned things up quite a bit, and it was the first kind of attempt at them trying to do what they're doing with core updates now and improve that, that content quality by, by, by penalizing certain things. But something got, kind of got spawned from this. I think a lot of agencies were guilty of it, and I think just generally, even, even I think Matt Cutts might have, have coined it a few times, was this content is king, which, you know, you know fair enough. But the problem with that is people just took that and thought, right, we need to create loads and loads of content now. Agencies were obsessed with creating you know, 20 blog posts a month or 50 landing pages a month. So it, it created and it started this kind of oversaturation of content where we think if we create loads of content on these keywords, we're going to rank better. Which made, at, at that time, with the algo as, well, well, as it was at that time, it, it probably did help, but it did create this issue now whereby... Um, this content is king, ethos can be quite dangerous. I still think content is king or queen, but you've got to do it pragmatically, as we say. So Panda, as I say, created this huge saturation of content back on the web, yeah, obviously quite a long time ago now. I mean, you'd like to think we'd have cleaned it up by now when people had stopped doing it, but you still do see this kind of, this kind of this attitude of just throwing as much shit against the wall ethos of content-wise and hoping it's going to stick. The key to it really is intent, really. Obviously, you're going to want to rank certain keywords for certain different kind of content types. So ranking these various pages requires optimizing for their specific intent. You know, various different tools have intent in there, you know, different labels on them. You know, I quite like AWR. Um, you know, other people use Systrix. But it really, it's like difference between informational, transactional, navigational content. Right? What, what kind of content do you need for that particular uh, stage of the journey? So if I'm going to talk on it from an e-commerce perspective, obviously you've got PLPs, PDPs, blogs and articles, and then your kind of guides and resources. All those have kind of got slightly different intents and need different kinds of content. And what you'll find is the keywords for that you need to target via those page types need to be carefully considered and, and the content needs to be different. You may not need loads and loads of content for each of those. For instance, you don't need 20 blogs on your hero keyword. You need a succinct PLP, a succinct PDP, maybe a nice supporting article, and if it works to have an evergreen piece for, for a different content set, then great. So you can see here that this shifts all the time, which is the key thing, because you've got to keep an eye on this intent. Once you've done that analysis and you've created your content, you can't just rest on your laurels and be like, we know it's sorted, because Google's algorithms change all the time. Intent behind the keywords change all the time. You might find that your highest value keyword has gone from being a commercial to an informational intent, which is a pain because then suddenly you've got to start thinking about a more informational type of piece of content rather than a commercial one. It may not be that it's not going to convert so well. So you just, there are tools that help you um, yeah, keep an eye on that intent. A lot of them don't change too much. Transactional keywords tend to be transactional, but 
looking at its intent helps you to establish right what content do I need, and and, and you know that and not over optimize for those different keyword types. So, so there's loads of tools out there for it. Obviously, you need to you can obviously manually is, is is probably the best way to keep an eye on that. But there are tools that allow you every time you run your keywords to see if there's been any shifts and see if that search intent has changed. So intent's key now. Um, and that obsession with content has caused that over-optimization. A good example of this is a client who's obviously been told, if you create tons and tons of content around this keyword, we're going to rank well for it. And they've got pretty much created a landing page for every single keyword. And they're not performing pretty well. And you know, obviously, we need to clean that up. But it's a good example there, where you'll quite easily you see you've got locational pages, you've got keywords, you've got informational pages, and they've all got their own landing page. None of them are doing particularly well, because Google's just like, I don't know what's going on here. Isn't ranking any of them. So that's kind of why it's an issue, and kind of why you should care about it. The best way for me to explain this is, is, is a project that I've done with, with one of my clients, whereby he's got quite, quite low authority. He's a pretty humble business in Yorkshire. He, he boomed during, during COVID because there was a lot of demand for his products, lots of direct traffic, uh, didn't do much SEO. Um, obviously, when the demand lulled after COVID, obviously SEO became a consideration for him. But a result of that is, you know, from an SEO perspective, there wasn't a lot of authority behind the website, certainly compared to his competitors. So, he's now outranking the likes of Etsy, eBay, and Wayfair for some really high, high volume terms. And as I say, there hasn't been any link acquisition, hasn't been any digital to PR. The main thing that we've done for this site is clean up the keyword cannibalization and look at those PLPs and PDPs. So, I'm going to explain to you what we did there. And the, 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 the resolving the keyword cannibalization has pretty much been at the, at, at the crux of the, of the performance. And the SEO visibility, you know, has skyrocketed. So we've got a product review update, which obviously didn't necessarily to do with keyword cannibalization, although we did a lot of rewriting of the PDPs to resolve that cannibalization, which therefore boosted us for the product review update because the product pages became better. But it was this cannibalization between the PDPs and the PLPs, which, which got resolved, which you can see the recent core update has absolutely skyrocketed. And as I say, you know, no authority work there. Um, he, the product's excellent, which helps, but it's been resolving the, these issues, which has really helped us to, uh, to resolve that. And pruning the dated and low engagement URLs. So, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about pruning in terms of removing, you know, low engagement and poor quality content. But the double whammy you get from that as well is quite often when you're pruning out low engagement content, you're pruning out content that might be cannibalizing because it's been created for SEO. It's probably creating, creating some cannibalization. So, as well as resolving the engagement issues, you're getting rid of your, your cannibalization as well. So that, that's why you can, a lot of these things have a kind of a d double impact. And the vanity metrics, such as Citrix uh, visibility, have obviously correlated with, with non-brand traffic and sales, which has been great. This last month is supposed to be the quiet month for those, for those guys in their sector, and obviously things have, have gone a bit mad since the update. So this is just the impact that just resolving keyword cannibalization, if it is an issue on your site, has, especially if you get a nice Nice little core update just when, just when it matters. So reviewing the PLP and PDP for the cannibalization was key. As I mentioned, there was, he was massively over-optimized the PDPs because, you know, why wouldn't he? He wasn't an SEO. He didn't know when he was writing his product pages. He's obviously putting his keywords into all his product pages as well. And actually, the product pages had like 15 mentions of the keyword sometimes, whereas the PLP would have like three because when you're writing product pages, it's very easy to to go a bit mad, and then obviously the PLPs, people thinking UX. So that's why they were competing so much, because actually the, the PD, the product pages were more optimized for the head terms than the PLPs were. So those product pages were then competing with, with, with the PLPs. And then, as I mentioned, like the product review update, once we resolved all this and got specs in there and did, addressed all those criteria, you've got the double whammy of the product review update as well. But that, you know, a client who loves writing copy obviously is a godsend, especially when they're passionate about their project. You don't really need to brief them too much on that. You just say, look, make these product pages as, as, as detailed and as spe specific as you can. But the, you, know, you need to watch out because if they start going mad with keywords, you're going to create a lot of cannibalization. So that, that's something to bear in mind. And then making sure that obviously your PDPs are not optimized for the same terms as your PLPs. So we're able to resolve that. And through the rewrites, obviously, we, we, we optimize them for the PRU and boosted the PLPs kind of simultaneously. So, so you, can, you can kind of hit to, uh, kill two birds with one stone there. And then crucial impact on clicks and revenue. So you saw all those nice graphs. In terms of revenue, it took 215%. Conversion rates increased, organic clicks. So across the board, really. And as I say, you know, the site was on Shopify. There wasn't too much optimization to do. Low authority. The, two, you know, the, the, the big work here has been content work. 
and, and resolving that gap, like those cannibalization issues that existed. So that's I think, a case, case, case point for it, really, of, of how impactful that can be and actually how you can get a site that has got far lower authority than some of those massive sites that I mentioned to outrank them if their product's better by ensuring that something like an on-site SEO technique such as cannibalization, you see it's a good, if you nail it, kind of the impact that can have. So how, how can you go away and, uh, and, and resolve cannibalization for your clients today? So this is a bit where you can start writing stuff down and, and, and take some bits away here. Any kind of SEO analysis tends to start with, with manual analysis, you know. I mean, it's boring at times and it's laborious, but going to the SERPs is obviously the first place to go for many things. Um, bear in mind with a site search for a keyword for this, which is what I do do, there are some, some pitfalls to that, because we know that would, if you do a site search for coat racks, for instance, which is my example there, it won't just be anything with coat racks that's prominent, it will be anything similar to that, so you'll get a bit of noise in there. You can use a plugin like SEO Minion, which will download it all for you, and then you can sift through it. But obviously, the best place to, you know, you need to be looking at SERPs and what Google's currently returning, because obviously, you know, well, we'll get onto the keywords in a bit, but Google just changes what it's returning for these keywords all the time, and that intent thing that I spoke about already. So, you know, the first place to go is the SERPs, um, and do it on a keyword by keyword basis to see, right, how many similar pages have I got for this term that we might want to review to check, do we need them all? Are they the same intent, and how can we make that content more unique? And as, as I say, yeah, SEO Minion's a really good way to download that. Great tools out there. So Ahrefs has got a really good one, where you position history, stick your keyword in, it'll give you a nice graph of, of, of rankings, and crucially, it'll give you the different pages that have ranked for that keyword. Now, as I say, some flux here is inevitable. You're never going to just have one nice landing page there with a nice graph. But you can see here, we've got the collections page, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six products, and there was, especially in those early days when we were just getting started, a bit of flux there. So if you've got loads of pages ranking for the same term, that would usually be in, indicate that you've got some cannibalization issues that you should probably review. Um, and again, that you can see it with the products, because all these products were like massively over-optimized for that head, head term, which was coat racks. So that's a good place to go, Ahrefs, and check that, which has similar functionality to tools like, like Systrix which has a similar one, which will tell you, and, you know, where, how rankings have changed and what pages um, have been ranking for that term. They also have a show keyword cannibalization feature, if you go to keywords in Systrix. It's not perfect, but it's good. It's good supplementary data to add to, to, to the other data that you've got, just to check. And it will just show you, yeah, so, so what's, where, what's changed since the last time we scraped, and if those, those landing pages have changed. The key thing being those landing pages. If you're constantly seeing your landing page change for a keyword, then Google's confused, right, and it doesn't know which to rank. So that's the key thing there. And if it doesn't settle, then you're probably not going to see the performance that you want. Um, and daily keyword history on, in Systrix is also really good. So like this is kind of like a perfect example of, of a keyword that's got, got cannibalization. You can see here the rankings like 13, 26, 25, 20, like not settling at all. And crucially, the landing page is just changing every, pretty much every time which is just, just complete proof that Google just doesn't know which landing page it should, be, it should be ranking for that term. Obviously, this was caused by the PLP PDP issue. It's quite, quite a, um, a specific case, but this you can pull from Systrix for, for most sites, and it will show you quite easily um, what kind of SERP flux is going on, which is, yeah, it, that, that is a really good example of, of a perfect example of cannibalization. And essentially what we're trying to do is just help those rankings to settle. If Google continually changes the landing page, it's not confident in any of those pages. If it's not confident in those pages, it's probably not going to rank them as prominently as they deserve to be. If you help things to settle, then those rankings will improve. So I think when I showed you that, that graph there, we were like 13th, 26th, 25th, 39th, 24th. This is for the same keyword. Once we've got things to settle down, you can see the seventh, fifth, and you know that keyword now is in fourth on Google, and, and you know that's what he, hero keyword for them. And you know it's not just keyword cannibalization. We improve the content. You know we're continually doing tech SEO, we're tightening things up. But the major issue for this keyword was that Google has had so many landing pages over optimized for that term, it just didn't know what to do. And now it's settled. You can see the impact that had. And then the kind of next stage of well, kind of when once you've collated that data, you need to establish right. So you've got your keyword analysis, however you've decided to do that. You, you need to establish this, which of these terms require their own landing page and which don't. And that can be the kind of confusing bit. You're like, well, some of these terms are similar. You know, do they need their own page? Do we put them all in one? Or are some of these clusters, which we're going to get onto, um, 
And the best way to establish that really is to see how similar the SERPs are for those terms in Google. So you can stick this into Keyword Insights. So now I've, con I've compared Coat Rack with Coat Hook, which you might think, you're not knowing anything about the industry, might be a fairly similar, similar term in terms of, you know, maybe, maybe we could target both of those via the same, same page. There's no common URLs for those results. If you look here, it's not too clear, but you can see the code are quite, quite industrial sites like Screwfix and, and, and Argos and things. And on the left, the coat rack is totally different results. So that is, a, that is a perfect example that these two terms are entirely different as far as Google's concerned and absolutely require their own landing pages. So therefore, there'll be no cannibalization there. You, so you, you can establish that. So that's a really good tool. And it's, it's, um, you can quite quickly do some, some analysis in that. You know, I don't think there's a, a magic number of how similar, they, how dissimilar they need to be to, to um, obviously require their own pages. Common sense, I suppose. But if you can see that Google's seeing them as different entities, then obviously um, the common sense tells you that they need their own landing page. If they're similar, then that says that you should probably target those terms together. And Keyword Insights also has um, a clustering tool, or you can use Google Sheets which essentially, you know, clusters all your tools. You have to do the analysis yourself and then load the keywords into the tool. Although I think they've, inter they've introduced the keyword research functionality. I tend to put my own analysis into there. And then that, what, what that quite nicely does for you is, is cluster them. So then you know which, which of these terms require their own landing page. And then it uses AI to try and to base this on what Google's returning in the results as well, which is the key thing. Because essentially, we all need to, this needs to be based on what Google's currently returning, which changes which is why you need to keep on top of it and make sure that, you know, that, you're, that you're analyzing that monthly. It shouldn't change too much for keywords like this, but this shows you that these, like these terms here all require their own landing page, and these are the kind of sub-terms that you might want to consider integrating into those landing pages. And, of course, Google Search Console. Um, obviously, you know, all of these third-party tools are really great at giving you that data. Obviously, Google going to the SERPs is the best way to do that manual analysis. But in terms of establishing actually which of these terms are getting clicks and impressions for, on, on a page-by-page -page basis, Search Console is the best place to go. So make sure that once you've done your analysis and made any decisions on implementation, that you're checking in the Search Console in terms of which of those pages are definitely competing with each other you know, in terms of impressions and clicks. So yeah, make sure you're, you're, you're using your actual Google Search Console data there as well. So yeah, that's, um, that, that, that's kind of the, the way to attack it, really. You know, as I say, not every site's going to have the same issues. It might be that if you've got huge authority that you've got cannibalization, but it's not really hampering performance, although you probably would still get some marginal gains from that. But, you know, it just kind of shows on a, on a low authority site the impact that can have from, just from, from, from cleaning things up and using the data. Uh, a little bit of summary, really, is, you know, everything starts with an audit. Is keyword cannibalization an issue for your site? If it is, prune out any of your duplicate, similar, thin, or low engagement URLs. Pruning is always a good exercise for SEO anyway, because you're removing all your low engagement stuff that might be hurting you in terms of quality anyway. But what I think you'll find you'll be doing there as well is, uh, is, is removing that cannibalization as well. Cluster your keywords, however you'd like to do that. Merge and consolidate wherever possible, based on the search data, based on search intent. So look at informational versus com uh, co uh, commercial terms. and. Crucially, the results, and there are tools out there that help you with that. Fill in your content gaps, but not by creating URLs for every single keyword, by looking at those clusters and themes and, and, and doing it that way, making sure nothing's competing with each other. Um, and looking at entities, I've not gone down the entity route, because there's going to be another amazing talk, I'm sure, today on entities, and it kind of requires its own 20 minutes talk. But for the higher volume terms, probably looking at what Google is looking at from an entity perspective. Doesn't, it's not too helpful for the lower volume stuff when you're looking at longer tail or even zero click stuff. But yeah, definitely keep an eye on your entities. Keep an eye on whether you've got product pages competing with your, with your landing pages as well. And don't opt over optimize your money keywords. A lot of this comes from this ethos of and we've all got client pressure saying we need to get higher ranking for this term. What more can we do? Sometimes, unfortunately, the answer is not, not much. You know, we, the content's good. We've, if, and by over-optimizing for that term, as we know, and creating another 15 blogs or another infographic or whatever it is, we're going to be creating content that could potentially compete with what we've already got. So don't over-optimize for money keywords, no matter how much pressure you're under. If you know your content's good, you know you're not cannibalizing, and your, your, your off-site strategies are good, you don't need 20 different pieces of content on a topic. Yeah, that's me. So there's a QR code there which 
goes through to a kind of write up on, on this talk, which has got a few takeaways. Take a look and check it out. There's also a little first time keyword insights um, offering there for first time users. And the link to my talk there, yeah, thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all in one SEO software with mind blowing reporting tools. 